Scopes Monkey Trial of 1925, as some called it, was a fight of intellect versus tradition. During a time of immense change in the world, the small town trial in Dayton, Tennessee, made the headlines. It all began at Ray Central High School in Dayton, Tennessee. John Thomas Scopes, only 24 years old, taught algebra, chemistry, and physics. One day, while substituting for an absent biology teacher, he assigned a reading on evolution. The result, one of the most famous trials in U.S. history. How? The Butler Act. Be it enacted by the General Assembly of the State of Tennessee, that it shall be unlawful that for any teacher in any of the universities, normals, and all other public schools of the state, to teach any theory that denies the story of the divine creation of man as taught in the Bible, and to teach instead that man has descended from a lower order of animals. Passed March 13, 1925. The American Civil Liberties Union was looking for an opportunity to challenge this unconstitutional law, and John Scopes volunteered. John Scopes strongly believed in academic freedom. What goes on in a classroom is up to the student and the teacher. Once you introduce power of state telling you what you can and cannot do, then you become involved in propaganda. Clarence Darrow, a famous lawyer in the 1920s, represented John Scopes in court. On the opposing side, William Jennings Bryan, a three-time presidential candidate and lawyer. News of the trial spread fast, and soon Dayton developed a circus-like atmosphere. On the hot day of July 10, 1925, spectators crowded around the Ray County Courthouse. Toy monkeys, Bibles, hot dogs, and lemonade were sold. Preachers set up revival tents. A real chimpanzee named Joe Mindy, wearing a plaid suit and a fedora, was present. Inside the courthouse, the religious Judge Ralston tried to destroy Clarence Darrow's argument. The next day, the trial was moved to the courthouse lawn due to the fear that a large crowd would cause the floor to collapse. That day, Clarence Darrow called up William Jennings Bryan as one of his witnesses. William Jennings Bryan made many contrary statements and practically ruined his reputation. Clarence Darrow gave this speech. Fires have been lighted in America to kindle religious bigotry and hate. If today you can take a thing like evolution and make it a crime to teach it in the public schools, tomorrow you can make it a crime to teach it in the private schools. And after a while, Your Honor, it's man against man and creed against creed until we're marching backwards to a time when bigots burn any men who dare to bring any intelligent enlightenment and culture to the human mind. Tennessee newspapers hated the speech. A cartoon in the commercial appeal depicted Clarence Darrow as the Antichrist. After 11 days of trial, Judge Ralston and the jury came to a final verdict. We have found John Thomas Scopes to be guilty of violating the Butler Act. John Scopes was fined $100, a large sum of money in the 1920s. Only six days after being ridiculed in court, the lawyer and politician William Jennings Bryan died in his sleep. After the trial, John Scopes quit teaching and had children with his wife. In 1960, the film Inherit the Wind, starring Gene Kelly, came out. The film was based on the Scopes trial. In 1967, Scopes wrote his autobiography, Center of the Storm. The Scopes trial, a battle of the traditional ways of the South and the modern advances of the 1920s, captivated the public and the press. This trial represents a period of immense change in the U.S. and demonstrates the way the South fought back. Although John Scopes lost the trial, he contributed to a long and tireless effort to get rid of unconstitutional laws like the Butler Act. In 1967, the Butler Act was repealed, and today, evolution can be taught all over the country.